hello everyone welcome back to my channel so today i have a tutorial for you guys um i am going to be showing you how to make one of these um pouches for packaging i don't even know what to call this let's just call this um i don't know like an acetate folder acetate folder let's just call it that but um, I got the inspiration from Tony, and she made me this for our Valentine swap. And this basically just opens up, and um, it holds all of these flowers that she made. And I was really inspired. I wanted to make something like this. I think she was inspired by Bona. If I see the tutorial um, on Bona's page, I will definitely link her channel as well for you guys. But I absolutely love how this came out, but I really wanted to make a acetate version, so um, I created this. So the back is just um, the cardstock. I did layer it um, with the, another piece of cardstock, so it's extra sturdy. But that is how it came out. I absolutely love this. Um, I have been gifting um, a few of these to my swap partners so you probably have seen this going around but I will show you um my dimensions of how I made this one I think hers is a little skinnier and taller but um for what I'm holding inside of this this is a really good size for me so if you want to see how I make this um just keep watching So what you're going to need is um, some pattern paper if you want to use a pattern. I'm going to use this um, spiderweb pa paper from um, the 31 collection from Frank Garcia. And then I am going to line the inside with the black. You can definitely just use one um, paper. You don't have to line um, the inside like I did with the black here if you don't want to but I like my projects extra sturdy as you can see this is not going to get ruined at all it's very very hefty and that's what I like about it so um, two sheets of that I will tell you the measurements in a minute and then you're gonna need um, two of the acetate to make your shaker for the front and then um, also a one inch punch and a half inch punch. Circle punch and then um, some brads. So I have these um, gold brads from Hobby Lobby. This is the larger size. I do have the smaller size, but um, I like to use the larger size for this project. And then you're gonna need a sequins mix. So I created the sequin mix for the 31 collection and this is a spoon that my bestie gifted me for my birthday. So I have that mix ready. And um, yeah, that's basically all you need and plus your sewing machine if you want to stitch. I absolutely love the way it looks. And um, I did start creating this um, and I created it another way let me show you the other project that I did if I can find it so here it is and I first started off by gluing the two sheets together and then scoring and folding it and, but this paper started to crack on me and I do not send projects out like this like I I just I cannot give somebody a project like this you know what I mean so I redid it and I will show you how I did it so that your paper doesn't crack like this when you um score and bend it so as you can see the one that I did the lines look a lot more finished you do not see the cracks in there at all and um, that's how I like my projects so I will give you guys a little tip on um, how I made this okay so you're gonna need two sheets these um, both measure the same measurements 
it is going to measure six inch by nine and a half and they're both going to be the same measurements and then your two acetate sheets are going to measure six by six and a half i know acetate is a little hard to see but it's going to be six across and then six and a half going down and that will be your acetate cover and for both of these i like to score them one at a time so we are going to score we're going to score at half an inch we're going to score at one inch and then we're going to score at eight inches and also at eight and a half and you're going to do the same exact thing for your cardstock piece if you are going to line the inside. So, half inch, one inch, eight, and then eight and a half. And that's all the scoring we're going to be doing. So, let me put my scoreboard away. So with this, you definitely want to um, fold up on your lines before you start putting them together. Sometimes when you put them together first, the paper kind of fights its way um, with each other and that is the easiest way for the paper to start cracking. So I tend to do projects like this. To ensure that my paper doesn't crack and with this it's very hefty cardstock so you really have to be careful when you're folding up on the lines I just try and do it nice and slow This is the um, uh, basil cardstock that I get from Joann's. I absolutely love this cardstock. Okay, so we have our two pieces folded right here. So the way you can tell which one's the top and which is the bottom, the bottom has the one inch lip right here, and then the top has the half inch lip. So this is gonna be the bottom and this is gonna be the top. And what I like to do so that um, your stitches don't show on the back side. So if you um, want to have the back side the stitch is not shown then you stitch this first and then you glue them together so i would stitch the back side of this first and then i would glue them together so that you don't see um the stitching in the back right here so that's what i'm gonna do and then i will come back and show you guys how it looks like <laughs>
that I have this stitched, I went ahead and stitched this large part right here. And then I stitched this um, half inch piece right here. This is for the top. This is for the bottom. And then I also stitched this half inch piece for the top right here. So I went ahead and did that, but I didn't stitch this um, top part yet. And I didn't stitch this bottom portion yet. So we are going to get your cardstock that lines it together. Make sure um, you have the pieces facing the right way. So make sure the one inch piece is on the bottom. And I am going to glue this into place. I am only going to glue the back portion first. So don't put any glue on the top or bottom portions yet. We will get to that soon. So let me do that. You do want to get close to the edge just because you want to secure your other piece together since um, there's that stitching area. Just to ensure that um, your, your paper doesn't separate where you have the stitches. So you're gonna, I'm going to try and line as best as I can. Sometimes it's a little bit hard on camera. I don't know how you girls do it with your tutorials sometimes. So there we have it. Make sure you get the edges. Okay. So I did get it a little off centered, but it doesn't it doesn't bother me. So we have that. I love how it looks so far. And then we are going to glue this bottom piece right here. I'm going to glue this first and then stitch over this panel right here. So I'll put glue on the whole panel. This is the bottom panel that we're gluing. So I'm going to glue it just like that. I try and wiggle it around so that you can see how it folds and everything. That looks pretty good. And then um, a lot of the times when you have these two pieces, you can see there's a sliver of the black showing. You can always take your scissors and trim it off. There we go. And then you can go ahead and stitch this piece right here. But I will save all my stitching for when I do the acetate portion. So we have this top portion right here still showing. And um, I am going to be stitching the acetate with the sequins and then I will glue down to here, put this here, and then we can stitch this section right here so that it's extra secure for the top. So I will be right back after I um, stitch the acetate. So what you're going to do is stitch three sides of the acetate and then we're going to put your sequins in there and then you could stitch up the remaining um, side. So that's what I'm going to do and I will be right back. <laughs> Thank you. 
I am back with my acetate all stitched. I absolutely love how this looks. It's so fun already. So I'm going to try and tap the sequins down to the bottom first. Because we are going to be stitching this top part right here. And what I'm going to do is just take some um, tape runner. It doesn't have to be very secure, but I just like to run it um, with this um, little piece right here so that it holds the um, acetate into place while we are stitching it. And then I would add some glue to this half an inch piece right here. That is the middle portion. So we have tape runner right here and then I just added some glue to this middle portion that you already stitched so that it would stick to this area right here. Sorry if that's a little confusing. And we are going to place your acetate right on the front lip right here. And hopefully that holds in place while you stitch it. And then what I'm going to do next is just fold this piece down so that the glue adheres. And then what you're going to do next is just stitch this area right here. I absolutely love adding the stitching. It secures everything really nicely. So I will be back after I stitch this. Okay, so now that I have this front cover stitched onto your back panel, you can see it coming along pretty nicely. You just have to add your circles right here with your brads and it'll be complete. So I have the one inch that I punched out. I used um, just glitter cardstock for that. And then this is the half an inch. And then I'm going to go ahead and use um, black brads for this one right here. And what you're going to want to do is punch out a hole in the middle of these circle pieces. And I used a very small um, hole punch. As you can see, it's very tiny. I just try and aim for the middle as best as I can. This one I just punched um, two at the same time. So we have those two and then your brads. And then you're gonna wanna punch um, the holes for um, adding it on to here. So this is your bottom portion with the one inch lip. I'm just gonna go ahead and try and aim for the middle portion as best as I can. You guys know I don't really measure anything. There we go, so that's my hole right there. And then you're gonna do the same for this acetate piece right here. So just try and aim for the middle, but try and do it as far up as you can. So pretty much as far up as my tool allows me to. So it's about a good inch. And that way, um, you can see if you do it a little further down, then this circle is not high up enough to meet together like this. And you're just going to layer your um, one inch with your half inch, put the bread through, and then put it in your holes. Secured it in the back. Pretty simple, and that's how you get this look right here. I do the same to this piece. Oh, I forgot to stitch the bottom portion. See, I almost forgot. Let me stitch that, and I will be right back. Okay, so I think I have all the stitching done. So I added um, that piece down there for that hole, and then I am going to add my twine. You can definitely use any sort of string that you want for this portion. 
I like to tie it on um, the bottom, the bottom one, but it's up to you if you want to tie it here and then wrap it around this one. It's totally up to you. You can do it either way. I find it a little bit easier um, if I do it this way. I'm going to do that. Leave about, I would say... About like eight inches so that you can get enough room for it to um, tie around this I love how this looks how so cute I love the acetate cover you can get like a little peekaboo of what's underneath so thank you so much Tony for this inspiration I love how this came out I hope you guys can tag me over on Instagram if you create one and um, tag Tony and Bona as well. Love, love, love this collection so much. I love the florals to this collection. The elements are so cute. This is one of the bats um, from Walmart, I believe. I just love how this came out. Love, love, love. So if you guys create one, make sure to tag me over on Instagram. I will leave my Instagram link down below for you guys. So if you guys want to give me a follow, I will leave the link for you guys. I hope you have an amazing day. Bye, everybody.